Well, well, good afternoon, guys. Uh, you know, exciting week this week, obviously, against uh, Dallas coming in town. Uh, going to be home against our, our crowd. It's going to be electric. Looking forward to the atmosphere. But uh, I know our guys are excited uh, for this next step. We'll go ahead and open up. Who will be your kickoff returner on Sunday? Right now, we're uh, planning on uh, Kane, you know, and uh, we've got some other guys uh, back there. But Kane, uh, KJ Osborne, you know, uh, we got a good group of guys that can go ahead and handle those duties. What did you like about the way the uh, show that still in training camp before he got hurt? Uh, I mean, obviously his speed. I mean, how electric he is with that. But uh, the way he handles himself in, uh, in pressure situations as much we could in practice. Uh, just excited for, to see him go out there and uh, just kind of cut it loose a little bit. Along those lines, I see Dee Westbrook missed uh, practice yesterday. Anything that might preclude him from being your punt returner on Sunday? I mean, I'm expecting him to be our guy. Uh, but if not, well, I mean, we have uh, plans to go ahead and follow up with that, and we'll see more as the week progresses. But, uh, yeah, I anticipate him to be ready to go. I know he's uh, ready for the opportunity as well. When you looked back at everything just at the bye week, I mean, what was the biggest area that you would like to see improvement in going forward? You know, the biggest thing that we stressed with the guys was consistency. You know, we want to make sure, I mean, I think these guys are playing at a high level. They're doing a lot of good things, uh, but just being consistent all in all six phases. And either that's, you know, with the field goals to uh, covering uh, kicks to protection and all uh, phases, we want to make sure we're, we're consistent in everything we do and take each play, it's a one play series on special teams. And so we got to make sure we have that mindset and uh, we attack it that way. Harrison Hand spent, I think, like 16 days on the COVID list. How's he doing? Just coming back. I know he plays on a lot of units for you. Yeah, no, he's eager. He's ready to get back. He's excited for the opportunity and, uh, you know, he's looking forward to it. And uh, it's good to have him back in the building. Same with Amir. Is he kind of up, is he up to speed now, you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we've always uh, continued to work with him, you know, on the side in terms of return duties and everything. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's dialed in and, uh, you know, he's chomping at the bit to get back in there as well. Does it um, change things for you or maybe open up an opportunity to someone with Stephen Weatherly uh, being traded to Denver? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I think all those all those guys in those positions, I mean, are, are excited for the opportunity to go ahead and, uh, you know, put forth their, their skill sets. But uh, we just got to make sure we prepare everyone as we do. I mean, we always have... Um, a second course of, uh, you know, what, what to do if this guy goes down, or if this guy, so, so to speak, gets traded. And uh, we always got to make sure we have backup plans for that and, uh, and we prepare for those. And um, those guys that are going to fill in that role, I think they're going to do a great job and we're excited for their opportunities to, to take over. You feel like you've been riding the roller coaster with Greg this year? I mean, he's had kind of a, a big kick in like four out of the six games. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's, I think in that position, regardless, well, I know he can make those kicks and he's talented uh, for those. Um, uh, but I think he's done a great, you know, really good job, you know, thus far, and we expect some bigger things uh, for him, uh, you know, to come. But, uh, you know, like you said, he's made a lot of big kicks for us, and uh, I know he and believes he can go ahead and make the ones that he missed. But uh, we just want to make sure we continue to build and uh, be positive, and because uh, I, I know he's talented enough to go ahead and uh, help his team win a lot of football games. Back to uh, kickoff returner. So um, Kane will become the third guy this season to do it. Is it important to try to have? One guy do it. I know Amir's not around anymore, or Amir Abdullah, and then Amir Smith Marset, you know, got hurt. But is it important to kind of have one guy in that role versus maybe just switching off every now and then? Yeah, I think you like to do that, and that's what we're trying to uh, build. Um, you know, we have two young guys, two rookies, uh, so we're trying to figure out what's best for them and what's best for this team. And uh, right now, it's uh, if it's Kane, if it's KJ, uh, whoever it's going to take that the return spot right now, it's. We'll let them go ahead and uh, run with it and have some success. And I, I know these guys in front of them, because it's not just about the returner, it's about the other 10 guys that are going to be blocking for them. And uh, it's a unit, you know, they're, the cohesion with those guys to be able to get some explosive returns. Anything extra you have to do with a rookie like Kane debuting in NFL against his uh, you know, hometown team, Sunday Night Football? Yeah, I mean, not just necessarily Kane, but, um, you know, with all the returners. I mean, even if it's an experienced returner, I mean, I sit down with, with them with extra time outside of the regular meeting time and everything, and we go through situations and uh, what to expect, um, you know, if the ball hits one, hits them in the field of play, but the impetus goes into the end zone, what do you have to do? Uh, you know, you can still down and take a touchback. So we still walk through or talk through all those situations, and so he's prepared. Uh, like we talked about it a couple weeks ago, if the ball's near the sideline, you know, establish yourself out of bounds first. So, um, you know, we do as much as we can with the film study and uh, whatever we can on practice to get them all caught up to speed and not just necessarily Kane, but that goes for the veteran returners as well. When you look back at Greg's missed kicks, is there any common denominator, or is it just uh, they don't line up? There's no, 
there's no consistency to the misses. You know, there, there is maybe a slight common denominator, but uh, the way, I mean, he's kicking good balls, um, you know, and we got to make sure we just go ahead and approach each play, you know, on its own accord and attack each play. And we set the, put the previous ones made or missed behind us. And we continue to go approach it where we've got the same kind of laser focus on each kick. But uh, I mean, those two kicks in the Carolina, you know, talking about those, I mean, those are two very difficult situations in terms of the wind and everything going into that end zone. And, and I know he can make it. There's no excuse. He should make those and he knows that. But, um, you know, those are high difficulty kicks, but uh, we expect him to make them. And uh, I think he's ready for the, you know, moving forward with those. <laughs> on that block punt, what did uh, what did Carolina do to create that big of a gap? And what should you guys have done to close that gap up? You know, I mean, it, to be honest, I mean, we worked that that play several times. It's just poor execution by one individual, and um, it, it's been addressed before that play. It's been addressed afterwards. So, um, you know, we we feel pretty good about it, and um, you know, we're ready to move forward. We learned from it, you know, and obviously can't allow that to happen again as a mishap, but uh, just you know, poor execution. You know, when it boils down to. But continue to, to continue to watch it and learn from it. You guys had a couple penalties on on punt returns. It seems like just across the league, like on punt kick returns, there's a lot of penalties that crop up on, on the receiving team. Uh, how much of a point of emphasis is that? And how difficult is it to kind of avoid those little ticky tack things? You know, it's a huge point of emphasis. I mean, we we talked about it all the way since OTAs. You know, we want to make sure we're a disciplined team, and that's one of our core values is being disciplined, and that's talking about p being penalty free. And that goes with all phases, and that goes from being aligned correctly uh, pre-snap penalties to you know, like you're talking about the holding penalties in the return game. And, and so it's a huge emphasis. And we, we will continue to make an emphasis even if we had zero penalties. But um, we got to be more disciplined with, in those areas. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, we're doing it, you know, good in terms of the other return game in terms of kickoff return. But we got to eliminate the, the ones on punt return because that hurts our team in field position. So uh, bless you. Uh, but we'll continue to, um, you know, move forward with that and continue to learn and just make sure we're in a, the right, our body's in the right placement and uh, position so we don't go ahead and get penalized. We talk about not allowing the, you know, don't make the official have an excuse to throw a flag. You know, don't put yourself in a compromised position and, and that's what we'll continue to work. And that's the consistency that we talked about, uh, you know, watching the bye week and everything that we want to go ahead and learn and build on.